Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk to you guys about just how to synchronize a QNAP and Synology NAS. All too often I talk about these two brands a hell of a lot here on the channel but with so many of you seeing the benefits of one or the other you all too often don't seem to realize how easy it is to synchronize a QNAP and Synology NAS either in real time going forwards you can use existing new and old hardware or simply just to remove all your data from one brand to another. So today we're going to do two things. We're going to show you how to synchronize all the data on a QNAP and send it over to a Synology and vice versa. We're going to be utilizing both a QNAP and Synology NAS and we're going to be using a system known as rsync which lets us synchronize and also schedule for the future data being sent between these two devices and thereby allowing you to copy all your data between the both of them either to start a new NAS or to create a synchronized two-step backup. So without further ado let's get the ball started because with these devices before you do any kind of synchronization there's a little bit of preamble a little bit of crossing the t's and dotting the i's. In the case of the QNAP, what you need to download is a program called Hybrid Backup Sync. They're currently on version 3, HBS3, with lots of updates all the time. Click that application, it's totally available from the App Center, and we're utilizing QTS 4.1.1 today. And with this application, open it up for the first time, there'll be a few pop-ups for you, just letting you know what it can do, and you can synchronize with different platforms. But this is what it looks like. And again, I have done a split screen here in order to show you guys both of these in real time. So I do apologize that not the whole screen is showing. Now, what you need to do first and foremost is make your way into the hybrid backup sync um, tool and go down to some of the options towards the bottom until you get to the option of backup server. And from here, it's where you need to amend some options. Now, leave the port at 873, that's the default, and I'll refer to that later on. And also, enable maximum download speeds, because the last thing you want to do is limit yourself um, unless you're running this back up while you've got other operations in place, such as other staff in the room, other family members, or you've got security cameras where limited bandwidth could really ruin that for you. The next thing you need to do is make sure that you tick this option here and add a username and a password. The reason you want to do this is because if you are going to create this connection between two devices, what you want to do is make sure that there is an extra layer of protection that stops anyone else from utilizing this system and getting to your data. So once again, what you need to do is have a username and password. I am going for just the word admin and password. And for those that watch my other videos, you'll see that there. So that's the um, login that we've created from this side. And then we'll move that back to this screen here. And now we make our way over to the Synology. From the Synology, we need to go to the control panel and go to the option, I believe it's file. Let's have a look. Go to file services. From file services, go to the top tab up here. And again, we are using DSM 6.2, so it may have changed in future versions. From here, we need to enable rsync services. Then down here, go to edit rsync account. And once again, I've created an account by clicking add and creating a new account here. And that is admin and the password password. But I do recommend you create your own. Click close, click apply. I've already not saved anything. And so from here, the tool that we're going to use on the Synology is called Hyper Backup. Now I did make a video about this um, a little under a year ago, and I'm trying to make this a lot quicker and a lot easier to understand. The tool that we want to utilize is rsync. There's loads of different replication and backup options, but the one we want to concentrate on is rsync, single version for now. Click next. And from this side, we have to decide if we're sending data from our Synology to our brand new QNAP, what we need to do is go to this server choice here and move away from Synology rsync server, which means it'll only talk to other Synologies, and then go to rsync compatible server. From there, we need to enter the IP of our destination QNAP over here. From here, we copy there, head back over, and then in that IP field, add the IP, but make sure to remove anything else other than those numbers. So HTTP colon slash slash or www or any of the rest of it, delete all of that. 
We can choose whether we want encryption. I'm not going to bother with encryption on this occasion, but if you are using mission critical or business data, I recommend you enable that. And then in the username and password area, you use the username and password that you created earlier in the rsync server option, which was admin and password. And then backup module will search and double check the available backup modules and folders on the destination device. And these are the ones we've added here. So for now, let's use the folder recordings just for the sake of fun. So we click next. And then what it's going to do is double check all of the remaining options. And now it's asking us which folder on our Synology NAS, this NAS here that we're sending from, do we want to use? I'm going to select the folder music. And then I click next. And then after that, it will invite us to ask if we want to back up data that's application based. So for those of you that have utilized Surveillance Station, you'll know that a lot of the files that are generated from that are ones that are timestamped, they're in a certain order, and effectively, these are files that need to be backed up in a certain way. So this offers us the chance to back up these files and folders in a much more suitable app-friendly fashion. I'm not going to use those, so I'm just gonna click Next. From here, we can change the name of the backup tasks that we're running, as well as configure certain options, such as compression techniques, encryption, whether we want to back up the background data that surrounds the core data that we're backing up, such as thumbnails, metadata, and scraped data. On top of that, you can limit the bandwidth to ensure that the, the, the backup task over rsync from the Synology to the QNAP doesn't use up too much of your bandwidth. And if you, once again, are running multiple computers or there's multiple people using the, uh, the network, or you have IP cameras that require a lot of bandwidth consumption, then chances are you'll want to enable this option here. And lastly, you can enable a schedule for this task from the Synology to the QNAP. After that, I'm going for a daily schedule. I'm going to apply these settings now. And now we're creating our backup task from the Synology NAS onto this QNAP NAS here. And we're going to let it finish and it'll ask us if we want to run our backup for the first time. I'm going to say no for now and we'll run it at the end of the video. Next, we're going to back up our QNAP NAS over to our Synology NAS. Maybe we've got a mixed NAS environment or maybe we're moving from one brand to another. But synchronization from the QNAP to the Synology is very similar, although there are some extra options that only QNAP offer. So what we need to do is go over to all jobs and head up to create job. From here, we want to create sync job. And from here, we select the option for sync local to remote. We are synchronizing our local QNAP to a remote NAS. From here, we select the rsync option and then click next. From here, it will then look at the available job window. Now we've got a name for the job, we're just gonna leave that what it is up there. And next we want to create a job on here. Now we've already created an Asus store one on a previous video, but for now we're gonna create a brand new job. We're gonna call this one Syn for Synology. Next we need to get hold of the IP here to grab this Synology NAS and let it be found by the QNAP. Once again, if there's any HTTP or any of that sort of stuff, always delete it. The port is the same as before, and the username and password is the one we created earlier. So we enter that in there. Now you can choose whether you want to use encryption, and both Synology and QNAP do recommend you use it. So once again, if you are using mission critical data or particularly sensitive data, I'd advise you to use that, but it will slow down your backups. So for now, we click test, and this will run a quick background test that will take around 10 to 15 seconds. During this time, it's testing the connectivity between the QNAP and the Synology, and you can see it's already doing a quick test of read and write speeds there in the background, so we know it's going to work. So we go to the bottom here, we can enable maximum transfer rate if we wish to make sure that we get this over and done with as quickly as possible, but once again, be aware of fellow bandwidth users. Click OK and it will start cre creating that remote sync server. So this is a drop down of all the different servers, and this is a lovely option 
that I think a lot of other NAS brands could really sit and learn from, creating multiple NAS environments and then just having a drop down for them all to be selectable. So the source folder is the one that's found on our QNAP NAS. Let's back up a folder and we're going to back up that recordings folder. We double click that and then it adds the recordings folder for us. Next, the destination folder will drop down and show us the available folders on the Synology NAS. For here, we're going to send it into the video folder. From there, we click add and now it's created this flow of data from the QNAP folder to the Synology folder. From here, there are advanced options that let us change everything from the schedule of individual folders, whether we want it to be daily, weekly, monthly, or ad hoc. Next, policies with regard to different kinds of files, whether files are deleted and whether files are duplicated, um, along with ones about metadata and snapshots. And finally, at the bottom, you've got other options about if the backup fails due to a network issue or an IP conflict, whether it will keep restarting until it succeeds. So we've applied some of those options there in the background. We've got our job here and we can choose to sync now if we choose, but we won't, we'll just click apply for now. And what will happen is it will now present us with our available job. So on the left hand side of the screen here, we've got our QNAP and we've got our remote job created to back up the selected folder we chose and we could have selected the entire volume if we chose from the QNAP onto the Synology. And on the Synology screen, we've got the backup from the Synology folder to the QNAP. And when you're ready to go, you either create a schedule or you can just run the task whenever you see fit. It's that straightforward. Sync now on this one, back up now. And that's it, it's that straightforward to synchronize a Synology in a QNAP NAS. This task will take as long as it takes really, given the size of the data and the busyness of the network. I'm gonna wrap things up now and shut these two down in the background. And if you guys have got any questions about how to synchronize different tasks on your NAS devices, then do let me know in the comments and maybe I'll fit it into a future video. But otherwise, this has been how to synchronize a Synology and QNAP NAS over the network. Hope you enjoyed it. Click like if you did or if you found it helpful. Click subscribe to learn more about NAS. And of course, click the bell below to uh, in the corner to get more tailored information from YouTube about videos in the future that are far more about what you're into rather than most of the videos I put out every single day. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.